All right, for the first time in 39 days that Kamala Harris has been at the top of the Democratic ticket, she is sitting down for an interview. But she will not face any of those questions alone. Harris is bringing her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, with her, a move that some critics have labeled as, quote, weak, and that she's too scared to answer the questions solo. Let's go live to Mark Meredith in Savannah, Georgia, with the details. Mark. Molly, good afternoon to you. This interview with the vice president could give Republicans the opening they've been looking for. It could be a chance to expose Harris and their views as a flip-flopper or maybe weak on some policy issues. But for the Harris campaign, this could also be a continued boost for them as they have seen their numbers rise in the polls. Now, the vice president has uh, been ducking most of the questions. She is sitting down with CNN though this afternoon. We know one person who is very interested in the interview, and that's former President Trump. He posted online this morning about the anchor who's going to be interviewing Harris. Trump wrote, if she gave a fair but tough interview of comrade Kamala Harris, she will expose her as being totally inept and ill-suited for the job of president, much as I exposed crooked Joe Biden during our now famous debate. The vice president is spending millions of dollars on TV ads, introducing herself to voters while ducking the traditional Q&A with the press. But so far, that strategy appears to be working. The latest Fox News polling in battleground states, the Sunbelt states, shows Harris ahead in Arizona, Georgia, Nevada. However, it's not a huge lead, well within the margin of error, and it's clear that these states remain true toss-ups. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp, he's going to be headlining a fundraiser for former President Trump tonight, and he says it's important Republicans remain on message if they're going to have any chance here in the Peach State. After Labor Day, going into the debate, the race is going to reset, and we need to be laser focused on her record and what Donald Trump did when he was in president. Let people decide do they want four more years of this high cost or they want a different direction in our country? Harris and her surrogates are likely to launch new attacks against the Georgia GOP when they rally their supporters. And while you can see me, there is a line starting to build out here. She should have a pretty packed house in Savannah. All right. Mark Meredith, thank you. Great spot to be. Uh, Lee, we'll come to you first. Uh, what do you make of this? Finally, we get an interview. She is bringing her running mate with her. But what do you think of those accusations that he's like some sort of protective teddy bear? Yeah, I think that she needs to answer the questions herself. The questions uh, should be tough and they should come with follow up. And Wall shouldn't be able to bail her out. And just because they're both standing there doesn't mean that half the time has to be spent on walls. But you should be going after walls for the fact that he says that he went to war even though he didn't, that he says that he's a retired command sergeant major even though he's not. But when is Kamala Harris willing to sit for that live, extended, tough, one-on-one -on -one interview? She still hasn't done a tough press conference. When is that coming? When is she going to start loading up her website with her proposals on what she would want to do as president? And I'll tell you, if she sits there and she tries to give those answers, for example, about the border, we we're talking about our first segment, you have to push back because it's her administration with Joe Biden there in the White House where they decided to stop construction of the border wall. They ramped up catch and release. They got rid of Remain in Mexico. They got rid of Title 42 without a replacement. And you've had millions of people coming into this country. And Kamala Harris is the one saying, you know, ICE should be compared to the KKK. Mm. She needs to get grilled on this stuff and uh, I think that she would break. And that's why they're not having her do it, because she would break. Yeah, she's, she will hopefully get some tough questions about her evolution, positions that she's changed. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, it doesn't have to be equal time, but there are some questions that people would like answers from Walls as well. Is this about strategy? I mean, it's gone well for her so far. She's climbed and climbed in the polls. And so now they finally sit down. They got the two four, then they don't have to do it again. They can say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, we, we both sat mm -hmm. and we're not gonna do it for a little while longer. Is it just strategy? I think it is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But that's what's so heartbreaking, Molly, is because in these positions, they're supposed to be servants of the people. They're supposed to represent the people. And it's Americans that have been demanding answers and inquiring about policies and hoping and, and expecting a little bit more from our current vice president. I think what's so disheartening to me, in, in addition just to the plain old evasion, and the need for handholding is that this is someone who's been vice president now for four years. She should have utter command of all of those policies, of everything that's been going on. She shouldn't need notes. She shouldn't need her handheld. She should be the one that assured on the global stage people that she didn't need to meet with the spouses of the leaders of foreign countries in Europe because she was the representative of the United States and the high office holding. So why, why a select interview? Why does she need a man and her uh, running mate. Why can't she just say, yep, I got this one, because I'm supposed to trust her in the White House, but I can't even trust her in an interview.
Marie, do you have any concerns? You know, it's it's been this 40 days, and you climb higher and higher up the mountain, the greater the fall. That there's mm -hmm. so great of an expectation on this interview that this is where we see the polls change. Well, look, I think the reason she is now leading in most national and battleground state polls is because she actually is talking to the American people. She is doing voter events across the battleground states, not just these big uh, rallies, but also meeting with voters at local diners and on the campaign trail. And they like what they're seeing. And look, she doesn't need handholding. I guarantee you that she doesn't, and she will do solo interviews. But I would remind everyone that every major presidential ticket since 2004 has done a joint interview coming out of the convention. Our colleague Jesse Waters interviewed J.D. Vance and Donald Trump together coming out of their convention. It is well-honed practice that tickets often do a first interview after the convention or, or sh shortly thereafter together. And I guarantee you she will do interviews on her own. But let's just be clear. Republicans are complaining because they see her rising. They see voters liking what she's selling. And when you complain about logistics or strategy tactics, you know you're losing. And I think Democrats feel pretty good about that today. Yeah. Tammy, if yeah. she will do solo interviews, if she waits another 40 days, that's one solo interview. And then the election, less than 40 days I, after I that. I think the unique difference uh, regarding after a convention and interviews is that those candidates have moved through primaries that Americans have heard from them in a variety of ways. Debates in their own primary system with their own competitors. She's the vice same, president, though. Uh, Murray. Yeah. In the same hear from her position. <laughs> um, when she's vice president, we actually did not hear from her. Or she was, in fact, appraising Bidenomics, saying the border was fine, saying everything's great here, this everything's just fine. Now she's coming out saying, for whatever reason, she doesn't agree with those things, which means she thinks they failed. Let me just suggest also that the interviewer uh, needs to reject the premise that Kamala Harris is new, that she is not the incumbent, that she has never held these positions. A good journalist would reject that absurd premise from the beginning instead of playing that game. So this might be an infomercial tonight, or we might see someone stumble into real good journalism and stick with it. That is the opportunity for Dana Bash, and it's a good opportunity. I want women to win, but this has been embarrassing. We've seen around the world women can lead, and I'll, I'll wrap with this is that she, where she doesn't want to talk. Voting starts in about two weeks, right? The remote, the, the mail-in voting. Uh, and so she wants to keep quiet. Why is that? Because she knows if she has to speak on the issues, she'll be revealed. Mm. And that is, of course, the problem. And we'll see what happens tonight. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.